How do you know this is an ellipse? Why is it not a parabola? And why is it not a circle? And why is it not a hyperbola? Well, the first thing to do is change it from the general form to the standard form. When you complete the squares for both of these expressions, whatever you see is what tells you what it's gonna be. Let's complete the squares. Now, this is how you prepare the grounds for completing the squares. You want to write each quadratic expression separate from um, the other one, and then you take the number that's 36, take it to the other side. So what you have here are just the quadratic expressions. Now, let's start with the one that's very easy, okay? Right now, at this point, uh, to complete this square, we just take half of this, the constant, the, the b, the coefficient of x, half of that is going to be negative 3. If we square negative 3, it's going to be positive 9. So we're going to add 9 to this, and we're going to add that 9 to this side also. And then let's go here. Now, we don't want to do, you can't do anything completing the squares if the coefficient of x squared is not 1. So we want to make this 1 so we can factor out the 36. So this is going to be 36 into y squared plus, um, this is going to be 2y. Okay, so our expression has changed now, and then we can go here and write x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals negative 36 plus 9. Now, what are we going to put here? Well, you notice that if you complete the square here, 1 half of 2 is 1. The square of 1 is 1, so we're just going to put 1 here, plus 1. Okay. But remember that the value of this one, when it goes to the other side, is not just 1. It is 36 times 1. So you have to take 36 to the other side. Because what we just added to this side is actually 36. Because if we expand this, this becomes 36. So remember, don't take 1 to the other side. Take 36 plus 36. Remember, we factored because to complete the squares, the coefficient of y squared has to be 1, just as it is here. The coefficient of x squared is 1. So now, what shall we do? I think we are good. Let's write these as perfect squares now. So this is also a perfect square. So this will be 36 multiplied by, this is y plus 1 squared, okay? Plus, this is x minus 3 squared. Okay, remember, it's usually what you have here is half of what is here, okay, when you complete the, the, the square. Now, this will be gone, and you've got 9. Interesting. So, the, next, the standard form is the next thing we do now. We just need to divide. We want to have 1 here. So, remember, you have to divide everything by whatever is here. So, if we divide through by 9, we're going to end up with 36 over 9, which is going to be 4y plus 1 squared, plus this is going to be x minus 3 squared, but it will be dividing it by 9, and what you have here will be 1. Uh, so usually you want to have something under here, okay? That's where your algebra and your fraction skills will show up, okay? So how do we make sure there's something here? We want to write this as y plus 1 squared over something. What will, we, what will we do to 4 to make it be under here justifiably? Well, we'll flip it. You have to flip the 4 and flip it here again. So that will be 1 over 4. When you divide anything by a fraction, you are actually multiplying that thing by its reciprocal. So remember, this is the only trick that will save you here. Okay, so you can't have a number beside it. You have to have it under. Okay, that's why I chose this question. Okay, and plus x minus 3 over 9 equals 1. Now, this is the standard form of what? Well, as you can see, how do you know if it's an ellipse? 
if it's a parabola. Well, definitely it's not a parabola because a parabola has only one square. So it's either this is squared or this is squared and you don't have two of them. So it's not a parabola. Is it a circle? It's not a circle because if it's a circle, these two will be exactly the same. That's it. Well, they're not exactly the same, so it's not a circle. Is it a hyperbola? Well, it's not a hyperbola because the sign is positive. The sign is positive. When the two signs are the same, it's not a hyperbola. The two of them positive means it's an ellipse. Okay, remember a circle is a type of ellipse where these two numbers here will be the same. But that's not where we're going. Okay. You know, I often say, don't memorize a formula. Well, you have to know the standard form of an ellipse, and that's the only formula I would say you should memorize because that's all you need. Now, let's write it. Now, I'll show you why I don't like memorizing these formulas and see, see what's gonna happen. This is gonna be y minus h squared over a squared plus x minus k squared over b squared equals 1. This is written this way. In some textbooks, they put the x first. In some textbooks, they switch the h and the k. So exactly which one is which. Don't memorize it. The h could be anything or whatever. But what do these all mean? We have to now compare all of them here and let's write out all the characteristics of what we have let us start from the center okay so we're gonna start from the center the center of this ellipse is usually h k okay so well, this now see that's the problem k comes before h when we do our ordered pair because this is x so it's gonna be this before this which is 3 before negative 1 okay it's 3 before negative 1 that's our center we can go to the graph and quickly pinpoint that point you can see where 3 negative 1 is but let's just finish this so that's the first thing the second thing you want to get is firstly we have to decide which of these numbers is bigger well, 9 is bigger than this, so the major axis is along x and the minor axis is along y because this is the smaller number. Just remember that. Smaller, bigger, major, minor. So the major one is this, so we can say our major radius. Remember that the radius is going to be the square root, which is b. The radius is b, okay? In this case, what is... If you square a number, you get 9. That number must be 3. Okay, so the major radius B equals 3, okay, um, which is the square root of 9. We do the same thing here. The minor radius will be A, which is the square root of 1 over 4. That's A, which is 1 half, okay? So I'm just going to put this in parentheses. This is the square root of 9. Okay, this is the square root of 1 over 4. Just put it in a box. Okay, so everybody who looks at this knows what we did. Okay, what's the next thing we need to find? Okay, two things. What's the focus? Ah, the focus. The focus is what we call C. And oh, that's another formula you might need to put in your brain. Come on. C is going to be equal to the major axis the square of the major radius minus the square of the minor radius. So don't be too stiff with the formula. Just know which is major and which is minor. So because this is major, it's going to be this number minus this number. That's what c squared is going to be. Pythagoras rule. Okay. So it's going to be um, b a squared minus, oh, this time it's going to be, uh, this is supposed to be our a. Did you see that? So this is supposed to be our A because it's the major axis, okay? The major axis is along here. So we have to switch this formula to B squared. You see where formula, formulas are a problem? Because now if I put that formula here, it's not gonna work. So let's clean this up. So this is gonna be B squared here. 
and a squared here. That's how that formula is going to work. I wouldn't have used the formula because I would just have subtracted this from this. Okay, so don't confuse your formulas, and I'm glad this happened. So at this point, we have a squared minus b squared, and that means this is going to be 9 minus 1 over 4, which is going to be um, 8 3 thirds, which is going to be 33 over 4. That's going to be 33 over 4. That means c is going to be the square root of 33 over 2. Okay, that's our c. Ah, perfect. One more thing, the eccentricity of the ellipse. Okay, that's a very easy one. Eccentricity of any ellipse is given as c over the major radius, okay? So that's gonna be this, square root of 33 over two divided by, what's the major radius? What's a, tell me what a is. A is, oh, I gotta change this. <laughs> so this is a and this is b, so it's over three. So your eccentricity is gonna be square root of 33 over six. Now, generally for an ellipse, your eccentricity must be less than one. That's when it's an ellipse. If you don't get a number less than one, uh, you've done something wrong. Okay, so remember that. For an ellipse, this will always be less than one. For a circle, it will always be equal to zero. For a parabola, it will always be equal to one. And for a hyperbola, it's gonna be greater than one. Let's sketch the curve. That's all you need. So the center is 3, negative 1. That's 3, negative 1 right here. Okay. Oh, oh, we didn't talk about the vertices. Okay. So let's talk about the vertices. Remember that these things will happen at some point. But don't start calculating the vertices. Sketch the curve. Go back and write the vertices. So I'm going to write the vertices here. Okay. So let's sketch the curve. So when I sketch the curve, at this point, I'm gonna have um, the major radius is three, and that would stretch along the X because that's where it is. So go one step, one, two, three steps. So this is a vertex. You can see my vertex is at the point negative one, sorry, at the point six, negative one. So that's one vertex, okay? Um, you have six, negative one. That's one vertex. If I move to this side, three steps, one, two, three, it's gonna be at the point zero, negative one. That's another vertex, zero, negative one. So I'm gonna mark it. Now, what is the minor radius? The minor radius is 12. I mean, it's one half, okay? <laughs> Looks like 12. It's one half. Now, one half away from here, well, this scale, this is the middle, so that's one half. Um, that's gonna be right here. That's a vertex, and what, what are the coordinates of this point? It's 3, negative 1.5. So another vertex will be 3, negative 3 over 2. And there's going to be one more. If we go up, it's going to be right here, and that's going to be here. That will be 3, negative um, 0 0.5. That's 1 over 2. You see how I didn't use any formula to get all the vertices because they confuse me. I never use them. I would rather make a sketch and from here get it. But now I can write the formula because I know what happened. Because I know that when I got this, I actually moved from this point and I went up. Okay, so I went up, so I'm just going to add it to it. Okay, or subtract it depending on what direction I go. So now let's just do this. Oh. I need to do this right. Uh oh. Okay, let's just assume that that's a good one, okay? It's an assumption. No one make a lot of assumptions in math. <laughs> if you learned anything in this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you give it a share, okay? Just one last thing. What is the position of the focus? Well, the focus is always found on the major axis, and this is the major axis. This
this is the minor axis. So the focus has to be somewhere here, and it's a distance of square root of 33 will be somewhere around, divided by six will be approximately 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, I'm not sure, but it will be some distance like that. So the, 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 the focus is more likely to be around here. It's not up to one, so it's somewhere here, okay? So we can call this point C.